Welcome everybody to the Ultimate Mixdown. Thanks for joining in. In this mini-series, I'm going to show you how to record a song from start to finish. And in this first video, I'll show you how to set up your project, make sure that you have the proper hardware and that your hardware is connected, making sure that you have the proper settings in your software so that it can communicate with your hardware. And then we're going to create our first track, a guide track, that we're going to use as the basis for the rest of our song. So let's get right into it. Even if you've never recorded a song before, we're going to go through the steps of making sure that you have your hardware configured properly, you've made all the necessary connections you need to make between your instruments and your hardware. So in order to record a guitar or vocals into your software, oftentimes you're going to need an external interface like this Focusrite 2i2 right here that plugs directly into your MacBook or your PC. And this allows for you to record into the PC using an external sound card that will give you high quality audio. So the audio interface connects directly to your computer through USB or USB-C connections. Once you've plugged your audio interface into your computer, you want to make sure that that hardware device is set in your DAW. So open up your DAW, and the first thing you can do is go to Preferences. And then under Device or Hardware Device, you'll see the device. Here I'm using the Scarlett 2i2, so this is the focus, right? So I select this, and in my case, it's going to give me input and output to that device. In your case, you might need to select this both for the input and the output so that you can hear what's coming back through your headphones or your speakers. And while we're here, the next thing we want to take a look at is sample rate. So for audio, we want to set our sample rate to 48 kilohertz. We're going to create a song that can be played on digital, on mediums like CD, uh, can be played on the radio, you could play it in Spotify. Uh, you can also set it to 44.1 kilohertz as well. That's a standard for CDs. There's other common settings like 96 kilohertz, um, but we don't need that for this application. For the requested block size, you want to set this to 128. What this allows is for a very low latency when we're recording. Latency is how long it takes for the audio to travel into your interface, convert to digital, travel back through your interface, and into your headphones or your monitors. If you have a high block size, then it's going to take a lot longer for that audio to convert in, process, and convert back out than it would if you have a low block size. Now I'm setting it to 128, but if you don't experience a lot of latency at 256 or 512, then you can go ahead and use that, but we'll keep this here for now. Once you're ready to go, apply your changes and click OK. So the first thing we're going to do with our project is create a guide track, and this track is going to allow us to play the song entirely through, get a feel for the song, we're going to use a metronome so we have the correct tempo, and then once we have that guide track, we can layer on all of the other instruments as we go. The song that we're going to use for this mini-series is a song I wrote called You're Weak When You're Lonely. This is a hard rock song I wrote a long time ago, but I'm very excited to have it recorded and to share it with all of you. In Reaper, all you have to do to create a new track is double-click the track control panel. In other DAWs, there'll be a menu option or a command that you can press, uh, something like insert track or track insert new track. So I'll go ahead and create the new track. In Reaper, there's no such thing as setting different types of tracks, like MIDI track, audio track, instrument track. The routing is automatically done for you. Um, but in this case, we're going to be recording our guide track with a guitar. So in your software, you want to make sure that you've created a mono audio track. Mono meaning that it's dead center on one channel. Stereo would be that it comes in on two channels and you can pan them left and right. But anytime you record guitars, unless you're doing something funky, you can go ahead with the mono track. Once you have your track created, the first thing you want to do is set up your input. So right now I have my mic coming in through my input one channel on my focus, right? So the guitar is going to be coming in on input two. So you can click input and select input two. The next thing you want to do is record arm your track. Now by record arming the track, that means that once you start recording, it's going to pick up the audio signal that you're playing into your audio interface and it's going to record it into your DAW. If you want to be able to hear the track as you're recording, you want to do input monitoring. In Reaper it's record monitoring, so click this button. Before we can go ahead and record anything, we want to make sure that we've set our input levels appropriately. 
And the way you want to set the input level is by using the level on your recording device. Changing the level in your DAW isn't going to affect what's going into the computer. And that's the level that we need to make sure that we set correctly. So here I'm in the mix window. And this is a great way to monitor the signal coming in, so long as you don't have any plugins on the track. I'm going to adjust my input knob to what I think might be a good level. What we're shooting for is somewhere between negative 12 and negative 18 dB. What we don't want to see is anything much higher than negative 12 because this takes away headroom that allows us to process the audio without introducing digital clipping. It's always a lot easier in post-production to make the tracks louder. Now there's two ways to check the levels. One is on your audio interface itself. Oftentimes the audio interface will either have a color coding light or they'll have some kind of meter and that will let you know if you're in the green or if you're in the yellow, you should be okay just as long as the loudest parts of the audio coming in don't surpass that. If you're seeing red, that means that you have digital clipping. That's not gonna sound pleasant in any kind of way and it will ruin that audio source at that point in time. So what you would do is you'd grab your instrument and you would play at what you would think is the loudest level that you would play at recording. And you keep an eye on that meter, and what we saw was it stayed below negative 12. We could even reduce it a little more, just to give us a little more headroom, but I'm okay with the loudest peaks being right around that negative 12. I also saw on my focus right that the color around the input knob was green, so that's a good indication that there's no kind of clipping that's going on there. One other thing I want to do before I record is set the tempo. What you can do is you can turn on the tempo, or in some DAWs you need to create a click track. That click track will play the tempo of the song with the sound of a metronome. And you can take a listen, and you can either hum the song that you're working with, or you can play the guitar along with the metronome. And what you want to do is adjust the metronome to match the beats that you're playing on the guitar, or the, or the beats that you're humming. Okay, so this is my metronome. That's 120 BPM, that's too fast for the song I'm trying to record. I'll take a listen at 100. So I know that the tempo of my song is 96 BPM. That's beats per minute, so it sounds like this. Once you know the tempo of your song, make sure that playback is at the very beginning. I like to listen to a bar or two before I start recording. So usually I'll record by bar three. Now, once you have your track record armed, your input selected, your input level correctly adjusted, and input monitoring on, the next thing you would do is click the record button and it'll start recording the audio. Okay, and once you have your guide track recorded, you're ready to start building your song from the bottom up. Or from the top down if you prefer, but in this series we're going to go from the bottom up. Uh, one last tip I want to leave you with is make sure that you have your song, I would say at least 95% ready to record. What that means is that you have all the parts there. For vocals, you have all the lyrics. For guitar, all the notes, melodies, chords. The reason being... While it's good to be creative in the studio and work with harmonies, especially if you're by yourself, but if you don't have the basics there, you're going to be constantly struggling to write the song while you're supposed to be recording it. I can write the guitar melody, I can write the vocals, the lyrics, and then I can go into the studio fresh and ready to record. I can focus on the recording and not get hung up in any given section in the song. If you found this video useful, stick around for the next video because in that one, we're going to go through the detail of programming drums so that you can start building your song.